Hey everybody, I'm back for another review of Love and Marriage Huntsville, Nail Razor, uh, Season 8, Episode 11. <clears throat> if you're watching this, first of all, thank you. Um, if you're new here, be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it. Alright, so let's get down to it. Y'all, I had a nap around 6.30. And I had gotten a lot of stuff done today, but I don't know what came over me and I just, whew. And then I got back up to watch this. But anyway, um, Donald Trump has had an apparent or what seems to be either an assassination attempt or a harm attempt. Um, I don't know. More details to come. Um, you know, I think it's strange that Donald Trump was at a rally where the Secret Service is. And for what seemed like 10 seconds of tussling, um, on the ground before we saw the Secret Service run up there was strange to me. Okay, first of all, he's a former president. And a president has Secret Service for the rest of his life regardless of whether he's the president again or not. Um, he doesn't just have regular security. So I'm, I'm watching that kind of like, what the fuck? Then he got up and his ear was bleeding. He did a fist pump. There were gunshots. I don't know what to think of it. Like I said, details are to come. I'm not sitting around wishing death on nobody or nothing, but. Okay. Anyway, moving on. Season 8, episode 11. All right, so we pick up with the Fletchers having one of their family fights. Um, why are these kids trying to tell Nell she needs therapy? And I'm not suggesting that Nell may not need therapy. What I am saying is they're not getting it. Okay, maybe if y'all quit draining on y'all's mother, um, she won't need it as badly. Now, the way they collectively turned on their mother and claimed she needed it was indicative of how, one, they think when their mother draws boundaries that there must be something wrong with her. <laughs> Two, <laughs> the collective, this is what mom needs to do, was some bullshit. Okay, and I'm glad Nell shut them down and was like, no, I just need to get out of debt and he just quit draining on me. Now, I'm not saying that Nell don't need therapy. And as somebody who uh, goes to see their psychoanalyst every week, I understand. I know what it is to have issues and need to work through them, all kinds of trauma. But the bottom line is the way all of y'all were just like, yeah, no, it's you that needs to sit down. That was some bullshit. I'm sorry. I'm not here for it. And y'all know I'm not one that goes up for now, but I'm not having that shit. Marceau at Black, and this is hands down probably the best fucking scene this season. Because once in a while when Marceau was right, he's really right. Okay, anyway. So Marceau meets up with Marquez. Because we definitely needed another M name on this damn cast. Marceau, Martel, Maurice, Marquez. Uh, 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 give me another one. There's another one that's about to pop up. Moses, like, like every time you turn around, it's just another M name. Damn. Um, so, um, apparently he used to work for Marceau at some point. I don't know for what. Um, Marceau was acting like he didn't know that his ex-wife was Trish and all this other stuff. Try again. We know Huntsville ain't but six inches long and everybody there, brother or sister or cousin or done screwed in high school. Like, cut it out. Cut it out. All right. So, Marquez, Marcus, whatever the fuck his name is. Talks about them getting married at 18 and they had kids. Th that ain't new. And that damn sure ain't new to nobody down south. This son of a bitch is sitting there talking about how they have been married for years. <coughs> she lost her parents. And he said, I wasn't there for her the way she wanted me to. So Marcel goes, so why weren't you? That was my question. And, and not like, I'm just like trying to figure out. What the fuck were you doing if you weren't there for your wife who lost her parents? This bastard says, I've never lost a parent or really any family before that. And I'm just like, what the fuck? You do not have to go through something to comfort your wife. I have friends in middle school who lost a parent tragically. It never crossed my mind to be like, oh, I didn't lose my mom and dad. Oh, you ain't over there yet? Let's go to the gym. Like, what the fuck? Like, that's just some dumb shit to come out of your mouth. And you giving real immature, ignorant, and I know that's obvious to anybody that's watching, but fuck him. I just want to make sure that's clear. My stance is fuck you, okay? 
So anyway, he sounded like a fucking nine-year-old. Like the kind of excuses he was making. You don't have to go through nothing to comfort your wife of all people. Okay, so Marceau asked him, you know, why he moved from Huntsville to Atlanta. He says, well, I can handle Kim moving in, taking my kids to school, to homecoming, and dance class. I said, what the fuck? How do you let another man move into your house with your wife and kids and then say you left the city because of it? Motherfucker, you moved to a whole other state because you couldn't see stand to see another man parent your children? Which was only possible if you left the house, your wife, and essentially abandoned them. The fact that you're watching this and not engaging with them is a problem. And it's giving weird. And the fact that you even think you would get in front of a camera and make these excuses and we supposed to believe it, is uh, something is wrong, wrong. No, you move to Atlanta because you give in like sus. Okay, that's what you give in. You give in, I watched too much Love and Hip Hop Atlanta and thought I could go down there and make it big. And then, you know, like Gladys Knight in the pits. Superstar, but he didn't get far. Like, that's what it's giving. Like, just miss me. You leave your kids and shit like that. Don't even have an official divorce. You know what? Or, like, just cut it out. So, um, then he proceeds to let us know that he walked away from the matter. I guess he was trying to let us know he ain't get dumb. That already tells me you are a special kind of immature. Um... And that's where Marcel, you know, in that 5% of the time where he is not actively being an antagonizing asshole, was like, so you couldn't stand Kim being a father to your kids. He looks at him and says, well, how do you define the father? I said, this motherfucker is pissing me off through the screen. I don't know him. I don't know his kids or wife. But I'm so over this lack of accountability bullshit. I really am. Motherfucker, if you can't define what it means to be a father as a man with children, something is all the way wrong, okay? And go ahead and take your punk ass back to Atlanta, okay? So we can get you off our screen and go ahead and get that woman a divorce. Um, anyway, so Marcel was like, well, fatherhood is something you earn, facts. Just going around saying, well, I'm your father, and be because of that, automatically I should get all this respect. Why? Why? Y'all don't get enough of abandoning y'all's kids or and abusing them and treating them any old kind of way and then expecting that somehow they're just going to um, get it together and believe all your lies and say, oh, daddy, I realized mommy was the bad one. Like, get the fuck out of here. Cut it out. And Marcel was absolutely right. Even if you don't like her, your wife, and fell out of love with her your love for your kids should outweigh that and he was absolutely right i don't know if marceau just has these bouts of when he's right or when his traditionalism just finally works in our favor or if marceau does puts on more than we care because i don't think you accidentally make sense like this but then again he could because he's capable of it nevertheless facts okay so he's full of excuses he's blaming the mother saying that the daughter was angry with him and said a man doesn't leave his family this and the other and she must have got that from her mom she's a kid how would she know that let me tell you something kids don't always have the words clearly this little girl did but i'm just saying kids don't always have the words neither do they always feel safe to tell their parents what they think especially when they feel hurt or harmed by them Marceau, however, intervened before I could really analyze this the way I wanted to, and I'm glad he did, because he was like, you sure that she didn't come to that conclusion based on her father, who did walk out in the family? I said, hello and good morning. Anyway, so Marceau, you handled that. I got to give it to you. I got to give it to you, because I know I ain't going to be able to give you much else this season, because I know you're going to mess it up. Anyway, I can't stand listening to black men make excuses and blaming women for their failures to be a father because let's keep it real women black women in particular do not have extra help they are blamed when they end up single as if they got pregnant believing they would be single 
and the ones who do are few and far between okay so let's cut this bullshit out and then black men could go around having babies all over the place and it's just the mother won't let them have access to them are you kidding me tides have even turned in court just in the last 10 to 15 years and especially rich black men are likely to get custody over their kids Dwayne Wade Usher for a time at least Deion Sanders you know when you have money can take these kids away as a form or method of control now those are exceptional cases because they have money but I'm still but generally they've been giving them back to the, as if the father wants them these are ways to manipulate and further abuse the mother no I don't believe Dwayne Wade's first wife okay who took him in when he had no place to go in Chicago when he was a teen and yes I do believe her that she was abused and then she decided she wasn't gonna put up with it and you try to drive her to take it away her get the fuck up out of here anyway that's a long way of getting to my point I don't want to hear none of that bullshit that manipulative bullshit you left your family fuck you so Trisha's relationship with Ken and his unwillingness to just go ahead with the paperwork by that I mean Marquez not Ken is giving I don't want her but I also don't want her to be happy. But my marriage to her and the kids I had with her are a way for me to control her and leave her lonely. And blame her for any shortcomings. Get the fuck out of here. And he was doing a lot of double speak. Marceau wasn't having it. He was like, your daughter was raised and clearly is intelligent and her mother didn't tell her that. He was like, you left. She's angry and she has the right to feel that way. I said, well, go off Marceau anyway Marceau once again he brings up in a confessional clearly somebody prompted him from behind the camera talk about Marquez and Martel basically has some level of delusion <laughs> and that did, honestly when he said Marquez is like the male in the relationship that didn't make no fucking sense to me so I'm 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 gonna let it slide this episode Mar Marceau because you did make a lot of sense but he just wasn't having him, him trying to blame Ken and Trish after he walked out in his own family. Marceau was like, the first thing you need to say when you do sit down with him is thank you. I said, and I, I said it before he could even get it out of his mouth. He said, because he's been a father. He said, is he paying bills? He was like, well, I don't really know. He was like, I'm sure he's paying bills and taking care of your kids. And I said, you know what? Marceau, you all right with me acting like you have some sense for these 10 minutes we had you on screen. Anyway, Mel and Nell meet up. Is it me? Do Mel and Nell look alike? Not to mention their names from this is what I mean. I just wish we could get a more diverse name cast. And by diverse, I don't mean bringing a white chick on named uh Becky. I mean like just names that don't so easily coincide with each other. Anyway, so she tells them about their family meeting, which was a shit show. And she tells them how they told her she needs therapy. And Mel was like, What's wrong with that? Honestly. I can understand that reaction okay so Nell said that it hurt her feelings that she felt like everybody flipped on her especially as she called that me and really to get it off her chest that it was taking a toll on her I didn't realize Chris had flipped too and by that I mean Chris you didn't have to agree with them kids in front of uh, your wife you should have should have waited till everybody left the house and then said well look you know, I know it doesn't feel good right now, but I kind of think this is something you should consider. You ain't have to agree with them in front of her. See, that's the breakdown of power. Anyway, uh, he should have talked to her separately. Yes, that's my opinion. Also, Fletcher's concerns do seem to be different than the kids, at least based on what Nell told us. Um, who think that something is just wrong because she's not giving them money. That's what it was given. So she admits that she didn't pass her physical because her blood pressure was so high. She is under a great deal of stress. That should have been the first red flag, Chris. Okay? Mel was like, nope, nope. Let me stop you there. I'd be damned. If I'd be in the grave early, everybody else living until late 70. Yup. You think I like spending money on therapy every week? I don't. But it's necessary. Because I got to get past the stuff. Um, but yeah, Mel, I'm with you. Mel agreed that uh, Nell's emotional thermometer is out of whack. Which is clear from watching her on TV. Um, but she was more thoughtful. I think Mel was more thoughtful in giving Nell feedback. She seemed to receive it better. And that's what I mean by Chris shouldn't have agreed with the kids in front of her. I didn't see it on camera, but I believe that happened. Um, is it me or does Nell look a lot better without all that, all that fucking makeup on her face? 
I feel like she looks a lot better. So Mel was talking about white people doing therapy and black people just getting around and doing it. And, and that is true for a lot of people in the black community. But we need to also, in the process of trying to destigmatize therapy, also consider the fact that therapy is expensive. I'm not talking about no goddamn life coach mail like you brought up. Life coaches, I no, 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 no. They are not trained. They take some online classes and give you some fake ass advice. Like if you just believe everything will manifest before your eyes, that shit is not fucking real. And there are people who get turned off by therapy. One, black people, there haven't been enough African-American therapists. Let's not act like white doctors aren't condescending to black people just in the damn regular doctor's office. And with psychology, it's very intimate. It's very personal. And you have to trust that person. And culturally competent psychologists are even more difficult to come by because then you have to have a psychologist, not just culturally competent, But you have to look for somebody who's done their own kind of research. And even then, have these old white men in particular gatekeep their research in the university before they get their PhD to help. You see what I mean? So, like, like I I get the point that she was making. But I think in the process of trying to destigmatize therapy, sometimes we repathologize ourselves. Like, yeah, and white people need it too. And everybody white has not had access to therapy. And honestly, their use of therapy has not stopped them from shooting up schools or colonizing people's land. Okay? So, let's just relax with the pathologizer. Anyway, Nell and Chris are at their house with Dr. Francis' visit. Poor Dr. Francis. They're going to work that man all over Alabama. Speaking of which, and you want to know why? Because he's a culturally competent African-American psychologist. He is in demand. And these people need it because they show us every week. Anyway, so Nell is telling Chris that she doesn't think he supports her. Honestly, looking at this show and the way he lets Martell even talk to her and ain't shut that shit down on more than one occasion, even with them sorry ass kids flipping on her. Yeah, it is looking like that. It is. Okay. And I, and I like Fletcher, but no, Mm-mm. but he also ain't my husband. Okay. I'd be mad. So anyway, good old Fletcher, Dr. Fletcher shows up. The other Dr. Fletcher, right? We'll call him Chris. All right. We'll call a regular Chris, Chris, Chris and Nell. So now explains that the kids and her husband don't listen to her. She feels like they go to Chris and he takes their side. And then she's the one who they come to to get money and stuff because Fletcher ain't going to give it. And the son says that Fletcher listens to them and that they can get it out. And his mother doesn't let him get it out. And then he shuts down. Now, the son said this is also the oldest. The oldest um, says she just listens to respond. And essentially, Fletcher, at least in the way I heard it, that ain't the way he said it, but the way I heard it, lets you finish your dumb bullshit where you talking around stuff, making all these fucking excuses. And Nell was like, yeah, a lot of times I do say I told you so. Now, we all know saying I told you so to people once they make a mistake and they already know that you were right the first time. They know. Kids know when you were right. You ain't got you ain't got to do that. I know that just from being a teacher. And you sitting there like, mm, mm. You don't have to go, didn't I tell you that before you got in that hole? Didn't I tell you that before, before we had this, now having this conversation, that your parents were going to react like that and you probably shouldn't say it like that? You know, just, I get it. I get that, okay? But I do, in fairness, and it's also what I think. Um, Now I think it's her, that she is often there to pick up the pieces to make sure her kids have and I think she feels like she gets the brunt of their frustration because they don't like her delivery. And she lets out her frustration usually in a roar. Um, and she is defensive, I think, because she's overwhelmed by the fact that she doesn't feel hurt either. Or she appears, and it, it is clearly, it appears like a good cop, bad cop situation, like Mel says. But the difference is with good cop, bad cop, people know that they're playing the roles only to get somebody to do or confess, you know, in the case of police, um, what they want them to confess. The good cop, bad cop thing goes left if you and your husband don't have the same goal. You see what I mean? So then it just looks like one is playing the other one against the other. And that's not good when adults ain't on the same page in front of kids. I don't care how old they are, they still gonna always be older. Um, And she feels like she does things for them and she feels like she isn't appreciated like Chris. 
And I do think that's hurtful to her. And I think that would be hurtful to anybody, to any mother or parent um, who's involved the way she is. Um, Nell said that usually when the kids come to her, it's about money. Because she was like, well, Chris ain't going to give you nothing. And they were like, well, he listens. I was thinking to myself, Nell, if that's all you have to do for this to be free, girl, j just listen to them kids and be like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't got no money to give you, but you know what? I'm going to pray for you. Um, so anyway, Dr. Francis pointed out that your mother talks loud, but is a delicate person. And beneath it is the fact that she's just done. Like she's just spent. She's had enough. So he makes the mother say nice things to all the kids. And the kids were receptive and stuff like that. But the kids, they also need to get their shit together. Anyway, um, Marquez and Trisha meet in a gazebo in the park. This was being mutual territory or what? Huh? They have so many weird places where they just picnic and shit. You know what? Never mind. I ain't gonna start. So <laughs> let's get this over with. All right. So he was like, I feel like we haven't spoken since I left the household. I said, you low down dirty son of a bitch. You left your wife and kids. I guess not. Like, what the fuck? What do you mean you feel like? You don't know when the last time you talked to your wife? Who's the mother of your children? No, sir. No, sir. Unacceptable. He sits down and started saying that he doesn't have a lot of respect for Ken because he was always waiting in the wings. I said, what difference does it make? If you were her husband and that mattered to you when it was happening, you should have seen him for it. Check that motherfucker. You ain't care. If not, fuck it and move on. And don't tell us you care because you walked out and left your family, you sorry bastard. Now, what the hell does the... Re I, don't, he, I don't have any respect for him. And I said, well, what the hell does the respect for a deadbeat motherfucker mean anyway? You saying that like not having your respect means something. Like, if Barack Obama says he doesn't respect you, okay, you might sting a little bit. But who the fuck is you? You, you got me up here speaking all kinds of bad English. Anyway, what the... Anyway... Trish brings up how she lost two parents six months apart. That's tough. That is tough. And he ignored everything she was going through. He didn't pick up the slack. She was like, I just had to keep working. And basically taking care of the kids, doing all the things she would have normally done as if she wasn't grieving and depressed. That would, that would take anybody out. The loss of one parent takes people out. You know how many people end up with addictions just trying to numb that pain? And no, I haven't had to lose a parent to know that shit, Marquez. Anyway, um, she, I was just thinking, all I could think was he ain't shit. There is nothing he can say. It's not simply that you messed up. Oh, I messed up. No, motherfucker. To not be there for someone who loses both their parents and it's your wife, you're a sociopath. Something is really wrong with you. He started blaming Ken for everything. Um, he's mad because their daughter saw Ken as basically her father, her father figure. She was like, I don't have anything to do with that show and tell video, whatever they were talking about. Simply still being married means nothing. Be a father to your children and be a man that gets a divorce and stand in, Hey, this isn't working for me. This isn't working for you. Or at least it's not working for me. And I just think we should take care of it. And I want us to co-parent, but no, you walked down, left your family. Another man is taking care of your kids. That's some bitch made shit to let that happen. I don't give a fuck what nobody says. That's bitch made shit, okay? And it's only possible because you weren't there. Can no other man take care of your kids if you're doing what you're supposed to do? Cut it the fuck out, okay? He wants to keep her from happiness. Like a lot of these bitter black men, when they be blaming it on black women, um, and it's terribly obvious, okay? He's more interested in having a sit down with him. Well, I want to see him. I want to talk to him. This is what bothers me. Than having a sit down with his own daughter who is clearly angry and in pain. I ain't got nothing for you, brother. Nothing. And next week, I don't want to hear, I, even though we're going to have to hear it, but I don't want to hear it. This Trisha Martell shit, what difference does it make? Everybody in that town. The way that's operating is a half degree of separation apart. Y'all, they ain't had no babies together. They ain't married each other. But let's just leave that alone. But you know Martell's narcissistic ass needs all the attention in the world. 
and Trish needs scenes. Anyway, y'all have a good weekend. Y'all, there's something that's on that I should check out. I think somebody was telling me about the other show on WeTV. Uh, it's just that I've been working, you know, because this ain't my bread and butter. You know, I like y'all and everything, but, you know, I got to make a living. Um, but if there's something I want to review, let me know. And the Deb show I actually really like on WeTV. Uh, it's just hard to review because it's like a competition show and I really enjoy it. Um, but, yeah, if there's something that you want me to look at, let me know. And I'll talk to you all soon. Bye.